Hello my friends and welcome back to Let's Science Star Maid. This is episode number 4. And this is... Well, contains two parts. Number one is a small update to the formula sheet. Again. I've added some stuff down here. Mainly this. Which is there for you to plug in numbers to see how effective your AMCs are. It's pretty much self-explanatory. You plug in your target shield values here, the total amount of shields and the shield region, which you have to take out of the game, or do some research on your own, and it spits out the the amount of time it takes your shields to go. It takes the shields to go down, how much energy your weapon system will use in total, and this pretty much gives you a good estimate. Or not estimate is relatively close. Um, well, because by logic you want this time to be as short as possible, and this number here to be as small as possible as well. What is important is that this line up here, the line number 8, corresponds to the line number 30 down here. So if I change any numbers up here, you will see it updates the numbers down here. But other than that, it's pretty much the same. Self-explanatory. But that's not what I really want to talk about. It's more... Um, well, researching all of this and building my very, very, very big ship. The... The Atlas, cla the Atlas Carrier class. I kind of have had the time to think about the changes to the weapon system. And I like them. Okay. You heard me correct, I like them, because... It kind of gives... It makes it necessary to make purpose-built ships. Which I think is good. Doing something like that encourages much smarter ship designs. Um, also, giving the the more groups you use uh, energy use multiplier kind of outweighs the efficiency that small groups and a high number of them in shotgun design heads over had over the use of sniper type groups, which had a very few amount of groups, but very large groups and very high range, and that is also good. And well, let's get into detail over that with me and live commentary again on my new Atlas class carrier ship and some examples of that. It has a few different weapon systems and I'll go over them to tell you why I think it's awesome. First of all, <laughs> I set them up in a ranged fashion, so the weapon system on number one is the one with the most range and as you can see it has a button an abundance of range <laughs> and yeah weapon system number two is a not close combat but mediocre range mediocre speed <laughs> all in all relatively average stats for a ship this size system number three holds the close range weapon system number one it has a little bit more punch in each shot, but there's a lower amount of sh shots per second, so if you were to take out big sections of hull, for example, a well-protected core room. And weapon system number four, once it stops lagging, as it has a lot more weapon systems than weapon system um, weapon groups than weapon system number three, has a lower range, but overall it has a much better anti-ship purpose, which it takes out a lot more sh blocks a second on another ship. <laughs> I won't fool you, all of them are very energy expensive to fire and cost around 15 to 17 million energy a second. But um, they are they all have a different purpose. Yes, and I shall demonstrate. Make you look at this at it this way. That is the high range weapon system. As you see it looks fairly scary, <laughs> but it's only against shields. You have the medium range weapon system, which it doesn't re even render all the things I'm 
when I'm firing. <coughs> and that looks extremely fair, extremely scary. And also, in focused fire, converges into the point where the range ends. You and in non-focused fire as well, you see the gun convergence is to the maximum range. And then, let's zoom in a little bit nearer, we have the close range weapon system number one. Looks like this when I fire it once, and as you see, it doesn't even render every everything I fire and starts lagging. And we have weapon system number four, which looks like this. And when I fire, the game basically craps down to nothing. As you see, I'm holding down the trigger, but it doesn't even render accordingly. And this is what it looks like from my point of view. Let's buy a ballistic skeleton block. So I can kind of demonstrate a bit of the ship. What followed was a little bit of maneuvering, a message popping in that I had declared hostile action upon by an NPC, taking care of that, destroying a pirate station, I'm flying a little bit, spawning in a ballistic skeleton, firing at it a bit, seeing that it has chunk arrows, doesn't load correctly, waiting till it loads, inspecting the damage, and a little bit of other stuff here and there. Not much, basically. Not a lot. Um, yeah, but let's skip to the interesting part. Um, it finally rendered everything in. It seems we got a bit of a chunk error, which wronged our results a little. But let's just pretend this is 60 blocks hull. And I'm strafing along it. It is somewhat reasonable speed. Okay. The core seems to be overheating. So we didn't get it in one pass. We didn't get to take on the shields in one pass. But... Let's lag our way through. And let's take a look at what this actually did. And I'll, li and I'll leave it on letting it despawn, because this way it'll be much, much easier for us to discern... Yeah. Well, I don't have to delete it, let's say. Um, I would not want to be the ship I just shot. That looks disgusting. Especially the parts where I shot into the water only. Oh, look at that. It's basically almost through the entire block. And that thing is 60 wide. So that's a 40 deep penetration. Yep. That is disgustingly effective. Well, you see with a little bit of maths, the right research and a little bit of ingenuity, you can make pretty much as devastating weapon systems in this version, as you could make in the versions before. You just have to invest your head a little more. And build your ship correctly. Um, well, that's it pretty much from me.